All right, everybody, as expected, as I told you before, I'm having on people that I find interesting, that I know you'll find interesting, and more importantly than anything, I owe this guy a favor because he had me on his show uh, 35 times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce yourself to everybody, brother. Introduce yourself. Thanks, S. Anthony. This is Rob from the Robin Slim Show, and I'm talking to S. Anthony Thomas. Man, it is kind of it's kind of weird because you do a talk show as well. It's very successful. Is it weird for you to be on the other end, having somebody talk to you about you? I don't. Uh, no, I, I don't find it weird. I do. I do enjoy that. I like being on the other side sometimes. Sometimes it's just easy to just go with it. Yeah, because it's it's it, yeah. Because the thing is, now the way I, I was wondering, because the format to your show, you have the comedy, then you have the guests, and I gotta find this out because I've always been curious about this. You know, I get I get a kick out of finding out why people started doing the thing that they're known for. You know, yeah. <laughs> I can't, it's always an interesting story so I want to know because I mean let's be honest most people would go you know what I'm going to do I'm going to have a talk show yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's super hard though like you have to plan every moment you do even if it lo seems like you're not you know uh, you, you're putting in that much effort you have to put in that much effort to have the product so uh, I, I worked in radio uh probably about early 2000s and uh i i lost the job and i always wanted to get back into it but it's it's not a, it's not like a well-paying paying gig at all so i never i never pursued that and then podcasts started getting big so i a couple of friends you know they'd want to do it and uh nobody ever came through and then all of a sudden one day slim slim was doing trying something and he's like you want to try it and i said yeah and we we've been doing it ever since <laughs> but, but, but the thing is what, what made you actually decide to do broadcasting in the first place because you said you did radio but yeah what the heck got you from little kid to radio <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was just that itch. it never went away and then um, I don't think a lot of people did it live at all when we, we first started. So we did it with uh, Slim's cousin for about six months. And he just sucked. So I'm like, dude, we got to get rid of him. we got to get rid of your cousin. He's terrible. So uh, one night I messaged Slim, and I'm like, do you want to get rid of him, or do you want me to? And he goes, I already did. So I'm like, all right, cool. So <laughs> he fired his own cousin. And I think from that moment, we're like, let's just like, figure out how to do this live. And that dude is a wizard with, like, electronics and all he's he's the one who's figured out like he built like a supercomputer so we could broadcast live on like three different things or more um he does all that and i i'm the one that does like the segments the bits and all, all that all that stuff all the news stories um but it did it took years though uh to to get like i don't know the groove down or whatever it's called because <clears throat> at first we would just go until you know we were done with something and, and after a while i figured out you know this needs to happen here. This needs to happen here. And then all the guests, all the guests, 25 minute interviews. And it's just, it's just like something, something we, we did along the way. I think at one point though, we were having like, <clears throat> uh, six guests on a show. And that was like, that was rough. So after, uh, a few years, we cut it down to four and that's like the, the perfect number. Yeah. That, that, that's, well, that's a difficult thing to line up four guests because <laughs> that's a month's worth of guess for me <laughs> <laughs> when we first cut down i'm like i don't know how we ever did six guest show like that was that was insane and mm -hmm. we did that for a, a, a long amount of years and i think it was like last season we started doing the four so yeah it's a lot it's a lot of uh you know you got to book the guests and every uh, Tuesday, I do the the guest prep where I spend like a half an hour on each guest and do like two pages of uh, of questions and all that. Two pages of questions. Yeah, because I find that fills that fills the time amount. Like the time slot, perfect. Two. So hold a second. So before you had me on, <laughs> yeah, you had two pages of questions. 
Yeah, <laughs> of topics, of questions. But you're just so great, man. I, I feel like with, when you were on, we just went wherever. We went wherever. But well the, well, the main thing is because before I would come on, I would literally listen to the show, and you were always doing really weird stuff. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I want to talk about me. I want to talk about what the hell you did to that helmet. That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the beginning part. And um, we split that this year. Uh, I think it was like this year we started um, where we only do we only do two weeks a month now because we used to do every Wednesday. But now Slim, his work schedule only allows him to do two weeks a month. So I had him split the show. So it's actually split now on like iTunes and all that where like the the beginning part with the segments is just the numbered shows and the interviews are Robin Swim interviews. So it's like a total separate show now. Whoa. See I mean it makes sense because geez man. I mean I know how difficult it is <laughs> to get get if if I tried to put four guests on per show, you would literally see me on the news walking down the street with no pants on and a baseball bat <laughs> just sm- smashing out windshields on <laughs> I just lost it Damn it what do you mean you have to move you <laughs> your work schedule what <laughs> Yeah, it's top. It, it's like a whole other full time job mm-hmm. doing the show, yeah, but I enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you see, the thing is, that's why I wanted to do the show before because sometimes you look at somebody and you want to do their program, and you know, they just they're just like, look, I just got to get a body in here. That's it. Got to get a body <laughs> in here. I don't give a damn about asking them anything. Just got to get a body in here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give two mother jumpers about this bastard. I just got to get a body in here. Where'd you go to school? Yeah, that's nice. Hey, you like eggs? Great. You married? Fantastic. Well, that was good talking to you. Uh. <laughs> great doing the show, man. That's right. Uh, whatever your name was, it was great having you on. Uh, yeah, click. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a lot of uh, repeat like you said we've had you on a couple times I do get a lot of like guests where I have them back like I, I think that's great mm-hmm. but you could you know have them back and then talk about more because you know, it's easy to fill you know one one interview but to have somebody back over the years is, is really cool I'm literally getting to the point now where I've had enough guests on where I'm going to start having guests on again and yeah. uh you know <laughs> you know you have to be very very careful you know fortunately i was smart enough to get people that i enjoy talking to anyway you know yeah. so <laughs> you know, so if you hear somebody on this show i wanted to talk to them anyway so <laughs> you know what i mean it was not like yeah. do, do you get really weird uh guests requesting to be on the show and you look at it and you're going no yes i do get that i get that in my email a lot but um even ones that i'm like originally no on sometimes i'll like sit on and i'll be like is that going to be a good thing so I'll, I'll debate that but yeah sometimes there's guys i just don't even get back to yeah because I mean, it's like yeah no absolutely uh, not <laughs> I've, I've seen some things where you know i'm sitting there going should I call the authorities on this person? <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy uh, a couple months ago. He was a flat earther. And originally I was like, in my head, I'm like, no, there's no way I'm going to have this guy on. And then after a few weeks, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have this guy on. So I did. I had him on. and uh, I don't think he liked us. He hung up on us about, I guess, 15 minutes in. But it was fun. It was funny. Now, did he hang up on you because he didn't believe phones exist? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god at one point I was laughing because he was showing me some I don't know it was like scaffolding on a hot air balloon I don't even know what it was supposed to be and oh. I started laughing and he got mad at me he's like are you laughing excuse me and I was like yeah what is that it's some stupid robot thing I, I don't know what it was <laughs> yeah, I, just, 
it's just really a weird thing because you've been doing how long have you been doing the the actual interviews? I mean, on on the show, how how long have you been actually doing that? Oh, it's been like six or seven years. This oh. is our seventh season, so yeah, absolutely six years. So you, yeah, I've, I haven't been doing it long enough to have, and like I said, I'm very careful <laughs> so mm. far <laughs> with, with who I have on because <sighs> I'm not really good with. You know, you, you know, if someone's really super rude or nasty or something like that, yeah, I have it's been there. You know, I'm sorry, it's... dude. I didn't mean to cut you off. There's been a Look, few times though where, like, yeah, I, I, um, I've gone back, and if somebody, like you said, is super rude or whatever, or disrespectful of like other guests and, and type of thing, where I've had the other people get upset, I've actually like. After the show, messaged them, told them how much of an a hole they were, and mm-hmm. told them all. I said, "I'm having Slim delete your your interview because you you gave us nothing. You just shit on. Me, or sorry if I curse, but mm-hmm. you just uh, trash the other guest. And uh, I, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. I know, that's the thing I never understood. Is like, uh, you know, by the way, uh, the next time I do your show, I'm 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 going to trash all the guests. And, uh... <laughs> it wasn't even like comedian to comedian. It was like a uh, uh, phone sex girl type of thing. Like it's like really these cheap shots you're taking, and and just the fact that he wouldn't stop. Like <laughs> that one in particular. It's like, dude, <laughs> that's just one of the weirdest things. In the world. And now you, you, when you when you decided to do a radio the first time, the first time. Was that something you wanted to do since you were a shrimp? Yeah, man. I always had that itch. I always well, listened to Howard back in the day and Opie and Anthony. I always wanted to get to like talk radio. It was like something I something I loved listening to. How old were you then when the Stern when you heard Stern for the first time? Probably in high school. Like early high school. So like eighth grade around there. And I listened to him through the 90s. I think I forget exactly when it was like his divorce. And he was just getting, I don't know. He definitely changed through that time. And he was just, to me, unlistenable. Unlistenable through that. Yeah, I remember. Oh, gee. Hey, well, let's be honest. We've all had tough breakups. And tough breakups will push your behind down the steps. Uh, yes. <laughs> no matter how yeah, cool you will. think you are, it will push you down the steps. You, you know, you look like. You look like you got roughed up, but nobody laid a hand on you. <laughs> <laughs> but me, you know, I'm young, and I'm like, this is not the stern. This is he. he you know, I I couldn't relate to that, so it was just like, yeah, I was a dumb with him at that point. <laughs> yeah, the first time I heard him was uh, 1986. He uh, wow. He went to uh, Philadelphia, and at the time, I was living in Philadelphia, working at a comedy club as a comic. And the person he was against, his number one rival in Philadelphia, was named John DeBella. So yeah. I would work at the comedy club, right? Are you live you in South Jersey? I'm in South Jersey now. I grew up in uh, North Jersey, though. Okay, so you didn't hear you didn't hear um you so you, you didn't hear De, uh, DeBella. So no. he was the rival, and I'm listening to him trash the guy that I had to work with at the comedy club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. And then the guy at the comedy club, I'd hear him trash Stern. So I'm basically like watching these two titans fight. And uh, it was hilarious because uh, the guy he was competing with was doing stand-up down in Philly. You know, he's, he was he had, he des- he was destroying the competition down in Philly. Stern comes in, eventually takes over for, and takes becomes number one. So I used to listen to that and got a kick out of it. And let's be honest, when you were a young guy, 19, 20, whatever, and you got a guy doing what Stern was doing at that time, it's literally the funniest stuff you've ever heard in your life. Yes, yes. I, and it's funny, too, because, like, oh, he, like you said, he took the Bella out. He took uh, Imus out. <laughs> uh, and then Opie and Anthony came along, and he was just, like, not having them. I, they, they were owned by the same company, the, the stations they were both on, and he would put, mm-hmm. a, he put a gag order on them at one point where they weren't even allowed to say his name on the air. It was, like, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it also tells you where the power was. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if another person just go, yeah, you, you can't talk about me. That's it. <laughs> they worked there. They, they, they found their way around it. But yeah, it was like, dude, this is crazy. 
It's crazy. Hey, I still listen to them too. I, I just got a really, I got, I got a big kick out of them because uh, it, they it was they had a good chemistry when they would bounce off of each other. Mm, they really did, just riffing off each other, and it was just crazy to me. Like after they broke up, to, to hear that they have like. They secretly, you know, not secretly, but they hated each other for so many years before they broke up. I'm like, wow, and they were still the great radio, still the great radio. Is this this is this is actually the perfect time uh, for me to break this news to the Robin Slim Show fans, who I'm sure are going to be listening to this. Um, the last time I was actually on the Robin Slim Show, uh, Robin Slim actually got into a knife fight in the kitchen, and uh, I tried to break it up, but. Uh, the, uh, I, was I not supposed to tell people about this? Is this? Uh, it's all right. It's, uh, it's not a sore spot anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I was. I'm sitting there going, guys. Really, it's, it's 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 one beer. You guys can share it. And they both said f that. And then there was a knife fight, and, and, and uh, I, I tried to stop it. And uh, I hope you guys have made it to the other side of. Uh, <laughs> We, we we worked through it. That's like we actually did have a fight early on. Early on, like one fight, I totally lost it on Slim and screamed at him. Not on the air. It was uh, it was off the air. And uh, he he messaged me. He's he's he wanted to end the show, and I'm like, you know, I said I probably shouldn't have got as mad as I did. Let's talk about it, and we did. And that's that's it, man. Like first first year of doing the show. He got me mad because he, he, something I wanted to do, he said it was hack. And it just, he, it was just because he didn't want to do it. So he took a shot at me. And, you know, ever since, so, ever since we, we've been fine. Uh, for those of you listening, when you do comedy, that is literally one of the worst things. <laughs> <laughs> to tell somebody, right? Dude, I saw Red. I got, I threw a chair at him. I was, I was <laughs> mad, bro. He's <laughs> <laughs> it like, it, it's like, it's, it's really, it's it, as a, if you do any kind of comedy, and someone refers to what you do as that, because it takes a lot of trial and error. It takes a long time to write comedy. It's, a, yeah. it's a very difficult thing to do. By the time the audience hears it. They don't realize you've gone over it a couple hundred times, <laughs> you know. Exactly. And when somebody comes up, "Hey, that thing that you've been working on uh, for like a week sucks," <laughs> <laughs> that's enough to set you off. Man. <laughs> yeah, not only does it yeah. suck, you suck. How about that? Put that chair and down, it's damn it! Original. <laughs> I never just, just but just imagine this because we know as as we do the things we do if somebody criticizes it and I'm not talking about somebody that gives you like you know I think it would work better if you know maybe you should try you know I don't know if that's going to connect with the audience because see I can take that everybody can take that but it's like yeah, yeah um everything in that notepad blows <laughs> everything I heard the- it, 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 it was no good. Everything sucked. <laughs> I've, had, I've had where, like, I get that in, um, like, sometimes on uh, iTunes reviews or comments on Facebook. and uh, Not Facebook, um, YouTube, I'm sorry. And at first it would get to me, but over the years I'm like, this is just their common go-to thing. Like, uh, you know, I, I, now I, it doesn't phase me. But at first it was like, I would get super, super mad about that. It is literally... Um... You think of, I'm not a really religious guy, but obviously I'm aware of the the concept of Satan. Mm. Um, Satan actually lives in the comment section of every oh. website. <laughs> oh, especially Reddit. He definitely oh, God. is uh, abundant on Reddit. Oh, <laughs> oh dude. God. I do not even, that's like the best, one of my friends put it the best way once. He's like, that Reddit is the town you don't go into on the internet. Like that's just the the, the place you get stabbed, oh. the place you you get shot at, you get mugged. You don't go to that town. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's they, Reddit. They, Reddit has rocket launchers. It's like good lord, because YouTube can be bad. Because if you watch a lot of YouTube, if you put mm. stuff on YouTube. If you become really successful on YouTube, there's almost a cottage industry 
and bringing you down. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah most of my... Most of the comments and all, I get is hate on YouTube. I get a lot of hate on there. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. Definitely. Now you said you got a bad now, the reviews though. That's the thing I don't understand is the person that you know, like some people write a review and they, you do great, and incredible, and say, so, "Well, I didn't like that thing you did," but it seems like people kind of now go to the review section. And do their warm up swings for Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get it too, where you either love or you hate me. Like I'm cool with that. Like I do understand that. Like you either you either love it or you hate it, or uh you're somebody I, I get angered. So you're having your friends come at me. That happens a lot of times too. Uh, let's be I mean, how, how, I mean I'm assuming that the first chunk of the show, because remember last time I was on you had you did the comedy, then you did the interviews. I'm assuming all of the complaints come from the front half of the show no uh surprisingly not they what? really come from like an interview that we've you know been really uh hard on that person type of thing because there are some times where like those interviews can go either way and uh yeah that's usually where it comes from wow yeah, cause I, I figured because like a lot of times like know from personal experience uh when i get attacked <laughs> It's, it's it's never it's never uh it's very rarely the interviews is like yeah. i said something that pissed somebody off and uh, <laughs> i do get that but usually that's from friends like f you for saying this a hole i love you and i love your show but that one thing like i'm screaming at the screen about like so i do get that too but that's usually like i said just some friends well the good thing about the friends thing is is you know you can basically just tell them to go f off because they're friends of yours, you know, yeah. and I, what I, what I learned to do, what I learned to do with the stuff with friends, you know, I have two podcasts, obviously. So with the other one, I just do the stories and then the interviews on this one. I have taken, and I was very wise move because I've been doing it for coming on eight years now. My wisest move was to take stuff that actually happened. So I'm not lying to the audience and I changed just enough so the people I'm talking about <laughs> don't know I'm talking about them. That's perfect. That's the way, yeah, that's the way you got to do it. Because, yeah, if they know, then if they know it's them, then, then they're then they're hurt. Because I've done that a few times over the years where I've told stories. And, yeah, usually I'm careful on them to change just enough. Mm -hmm. I've, I've or learned... use, like, code names. Oh, yeah, I, Always got to use code names. Yeah, sometimes I will switch coasts. <laughs> nice. You know, yeah, some shit that happen, stuff that happened in California is all the way in New York. And, and, you know, I'll switch towns because I've been to enough cities where I can get away with that. I will yeah. switch genders and time periods. Oh, nice. So, nice. I've, you know, you have people going, because uh, I had, I, I did a story about a guy that uh, we were hanging out. We were doing a show someplace and there was no bathrooms and he didn't want to get out and pee, which like a normal dude would do. So he grabbed the bottle and peed in it, right? Okay, yeah. no problem, right? Uh, of course, I immediately, when it was time to get out, I got the car door for him so he would not touch my damn door. This nasty Yeah. Ass. We oh. go to, he has the bottle in his hand. We're walking around. He's looking for a place to just throw the bottle in the trash can. We go to a place. He starts talking to this this hot girl. I'm talking to this other hot girl. He still had the bottle on in his hand. He put it down on the table, got distracted talking to the girl. Oh, yeah. Reached back, grabbed the bottle, and was taking it towards his mouth. Yo! To drink it. <laughs> Did it touch the lip? Uh, no, I caught him first. Because I stopped talking to my girl. The girl I was talking to, I looked back, I was like, this dumb bastard. So I go, I'm oh. running across. It was almost like in slow motion. I'm like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I would have let it go down. I would have watched <laughs> like, <my> like, <coughs> like, dude, this is going to be great. <laughs> oh, God. He got to, uh, he got to, uh, three fingers, you know, when you take your fingers, uh, horizontally, he got yeah. that close to his mouth. And he's like, what? Oh, oh shit. And then he cursed and threw it over his shoulder. <laughs> and um, oh. now that's a true story. 
but I changed just because there's enough. You know, I've done, I've been around and performed in enough cities and been with enough performers where they've done enough dumb crap. Where I will, I literally, I'm 52. I could live to uh, 712. (laughs) I still have enough. Now, have you ever had your, your lady get ticked off at some stuff that you said? Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm single at the moment. Single at the moment, but yes, I definitely have had that happen. Ooh. And at one moment, when we first started the show, I had a girlfriend, and uh, we would do the show, same as we do now, every Wednesday. And one week out of the blue, she took a Wednesday off, so wanted me to just spend it with her, and I was like, I have the show planned, and I have all the guests, you know, booked. Like, I can't do that. She was so mad. She was so mad, dude. She wouldn't talk to me for days. Like, I should have just dropped the show to spend the day with, or the evening with her. Yeah, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I've been there. I've, I've, I know your pain. I know your pain. But the, yeah. it's, it's just a weird thing because when we do this, you know, it's, it's like you, 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 you're, you're getting other people involved. They stop their life to talk to you with for yeah. their time, you know, mm-hmm. more so with your show because the amount of guests you have. Yeah. And, and I also wanted to be consistent. We were just starting out. I wanted to have something every week that was happening for people that, you know, were starting to listen and you're building an audience. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't want to just take the week off. Did she actually, was she, uh, did she actually normally listen to the show? She uh, did. She had been on once or twice early, early on. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after we broke up, I don't know. I don't remember if I may, I may have mentioned her or something. And instantly right after that show, don't ever talk about me on, on the show again. <laughs> <laughs> so she was still listening. I don't know. She still may. She still may. I, I may get a, uh, I, I don't even think she has my number anymore, but I, I may get a threat. You talked about me on S. Anthony. <laughs> Bad news, she's you. here. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but yeah, that I, I'm pretty sure that that was part of like what ended our relationship. Like it was kind of like she was super jealous of the show. Uh-huh. That was she didn't say that when 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 we, she broke up with me. But um, she was like, I need to find what makes me happy in life, and you, I need a hobby. And blah blah. blah. I'm like, okay, cool, go find that. You could have been with me and found a, a hobby. I wouldn't have stopped you, but go, just go. You just so you know, I have a headache right now because when you said she said that. My eyes rolled so far back in my head. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was like, wow. <laughs> I got what a tension a, headache from that of, BS. <laughs> I've, got to, you know, I've got to go work no. on me. Mm. It's not really you. It's, 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 it's work on me. You know, like, You're yeah, a great you, guy, but I got to get away from you. I got to go. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> How many... How many is this? Was this the only lady that the show has smacked in the forehead? No, I had one too. I had another one too, and uh, everything was cool at first. And then all of a sudden, she tried to like divide and conquer. It was kind of like Slim and Pete, you know, the other guy on the show at the time. They're taking advantage of you. You do all the work. <laughs> They're just sitting there taking advantage of you. They don't give a shit about you. Move out here. And and just because she she was a, a little far, you know, it was a little long distance, and she was like, "Come out here with me. You don't need them." <laughs> I was like, "No. First of all, <clears throat> I live out here. I work out here. I have kids. I'm not going to move any farther from my kids. Like that's that is my main thing. Like, and uh, yeah, no, she just wouldn't have it. So finally, finally, I I just broke it off. I'm like, I can't do this. And uh, she tried guilting me and staying into the relationship, which is another great thing. Yeah, I'm going to resent you. But let me stay here. And uh, no, I just had to. I just totally, totally ended that one. That was rough. <laughs> that is. That is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny how they how. Uh, and and if for the ladies listening, this is not gender specific. I know that no. you have dudes who get upset because you're doing your thing and you're not cheating or anything like that. You're just literally doing your thing. You say, yeah, yeah. you're not available to have, you know, I need a woman who's going to be home. And you, you turn into that, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, the guy turns into the sexist pig number seven. I came home and there was nothing cooked. Like, she wasn't cooking for your dumb ass before. 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, I had it too, dude, where like if a certain person followed me on Twitter, she would go through my followers. And you know, I, I don't get, like sometimes when you get to a certain amount of followers, you don't get every notification of a new follower. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, they would be like, why is this person following you? And why did you block them? Like, it was just like, I had to block anything that was female pretty much. It was just like nuts. It was, it was nuts. Yeah. Uh, hell no. That's half my audience. So, uh... yeah, that's it. I have female <laughs> guests. Like it, it was like, seriously, like that kind of a thing too. Like I really didn't have female guests in the time. Cause, cause and, have, and I've seen that you have like, like really hot women on the show. Yeah. So, you know, just be, just feel very, very fortunate that you didn't wake up with, you know, your, your junk covered in hot grits or. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know, well, I, <laughs> after we broke up, this night, I really had the hotties come on. I had, you know, adult entertainers and type mm-hmm. of thing. Like where for a while I didn't have anybody like that. I even had, I had a listener too say like, wow, your show's really changed. And it's like, no, it really hasn't. We're the same guys. And we, it's not what we're all about, but I do. If I want to have a conversation with that person, I'm going to have that conversation. How so. did that start to happen, though? Uh, what, where, uh, where I would connect with adult entertainers and all? Yes. Uh, well, the first one that uh, that I found um, on Twitter was uh, at Flirt Rider Doll. She's a, a phone girl, and she's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh I think she followed me and I followed her back and she's a cutie and we started uh, messaging, you know, I'm like, if you'd like to come on and promote, you know, your business and all, we could do that. We'll have an interview and so right from there. And she was friends with a lot of other ones, some who even had podcasts. So just Mm -hmm. from her. Oh, I'm sorry. Right before her was another one. Uh, Her name is Sweetly Sensual Sarah. I don't know if she's still around uh, doing the podcast, but she had a podcast. And so, yeah, I connected with her. We had her on. And she mentioned Ryder in the interview. And then from there, like I said, Ryder is friends with a lot of others, and she would refer them to me and all. So that was a really cool thing. Really cool thing. Now, do you, do you meet the ladies uh, who are working in the adult industry? Have you had them physically on the show, or is it all um, online or the phone or something like that? No, it's just strictly on the phone uh, that we had them on. Uh, usually guests, we haven't had a live guest in a, a long time. Usually it was like, comedians and all mm. um but especially with the pandemic a lot of people have not been not been down to and i'm personally not you know gonna have like anybody come in the door so we haven't had a, a live guest in like probably a year or more mm. did you get any did you get uh, did they jam you in the arm yet no i didn't yet i didn't part of it's laziness um but i also work i work full-time i've never gotten a break so it's also like i work full-time I don't want to spend my day off trying to track down a shot, but supposedly (laughs) they're a lot easier to find now. And also, um, I don't know. I don't want like 20 years from now, the commercial to be, you have the first uh, Moderma shot. You might be entitled to $25 million because your whole body doesn't function anymore type of thing. Like, you know, I, I now, why'd know. you have to use Moderna in that example? Because that's the <laughs> shot I got, you bastard. <laughs> you meant Pfizer, came right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, uh, Pfizer. Screw Pfizer. We, <laughs> <laughs> I actually heard the Johnson Johnson one can have some pretty rough effects. That one I heard. I been, was uh, scheduled for that one. Yeah, that, that's the one I thought that was going to be the, the best one, but I've heard some things in the past week where, like, they're redoing a lot of it or something. Yeah, it's, it's like a it's lot of problems. The, they, they actually, whenever they reference the shots, they tend to lump the, the uh, Pfizer and the Moderna ones together. They're, they're competing hmm. companies, but apparently they're the ones with the least amount of, you know, killing your ass. Right, so, <laughs> <laughs> and they have me scheduled for the J and J shot, and I'm excited. I'm going, shoot, this is great. One shot out. Yeah. And yeah. as it turns out, for for from what I was saying, you know, you know, I mean, I know it's a low probability of anything happening. I get that. You know, it's a really mm. minuscule chance of anything bad happening to you. But from what yeah. the doctor told me after the first shot, he goes, look. You still have to put your mask on and all of that, but you pretty yeah. much now, after a couple of weeks of just getting the first one, that should be enough to keep you from dying in a hospital. Cool. That's so good I'm to going, hear, too. 
All right, that's all I needed to hear. I'd still be back for the second one, but <laughs> I wouldn't have even got the second one at that point. I'd be like, "All right, dude, do." <laughs> he goes, he, and he's walking around. He goes, "Okay, listen, you've gotten your first shot. It's great. You're gonna still have to wear your mask and do everything that you need to do. So you know, this this shot's basically should keep you out of the hospital, but." You do have to come back for the second shot. And the second shot will get you to 94 or 95% efficacy. So we do Ah. need you to come back. I'm going, so the first shot gets me to 80 and the second shot gets me to 95. How about just give me the second shot, you bastard? No. (laughs) 80% is pretty good, man. I probably wouldn't see that guy again. Yeah, I was like, okay. Uh. Yeah, but only problem I is, I think, I think... <laughs> is the second one I heard had uh, some side effects too. Like oh, one of my yeah. bosses called out because he had a major headache and couldn't really couldn't really get out of bed. Yeah, they say the second one, um, the second one is the one everybody that, and I've kept asking people online, and everybody was very happy to give me the horror stories. Um, mm. But they, but but the thing was, it was just basically yep. the. the the only thing they said was it was kind of like, I mean, I've had, have you ever had food poisoning? Yeah, I've had that. I definitely had that. I mean, the bad wound, it, would it put you on your ass? Yeah, toilet, throwing up in a bucket and uh, diarrheaing at the same time. It's, it's no fun. Oh, so It's you, fun. It sounds fun, but it's you not had a, fun. You had a bucket? Oh, yeah, what a punk. Yeah. Stop. Uh, no offense, <laughs> but that's punk stuff. I hit, I hit the tub from the toilet. Oh, Yo, that's a good idea. No, 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 no. I didn't do it on purpose. That's just how explosive it came out of my face. (laughs) I'm I'm going, oh, I'm going to have to clean the floor. No, I didn't. (laughs) Right right off, I had to clean the wall of the shower and the the tub. But but here's the thing. They said it's not going to be as bad as that. They say basically... You know, you know the day after everything jumps out of every hole in your body. Mm. When you, I mean, yeah. you're just, they just say you're just at the point where you're you're worn down. You got chills. You know, yeah. you may have a headache or something like that. And I'm going. So that's basically all of uh, all of my friends in their twenties after we hung out. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's definitely like <laughs> a Monday morning. Is there, is there, is there going to be a hot waitress in the bed with me also? That's just, <laughs> <laughs> that and, and also, thank you honey <laughs> everything else is sad too like uh a lot of my family's had both shots of moderna my 90 some year old grandfather had it and he, he's fine so there's mm-hmm. really really nothing i don't like to worry about getting the shots yeah even if, i'll be honest with you even if it gave me the exact same symptoms of food poisoning I would know mm. when it's over, I'm not going to die. So I'm cool with yeah. it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I know I had the COVID when it, before, you know, before they announced it was out, mm-hmm. I know I had it. I had the worst flu I'd had. And I can't tell you how many years, man, I, I had fever. I was delusional. I don't even know how they understood me when I called out of work. And I only called out for one day. I worked, mm-hmm. I, I worked and I was coughing and I was sweating. I still was sick, but like all of us had it there. Yeah, you probably had it. <laughs> yeah. Hold on for a minute. Uh, give me a second. I, I got to put some plastic over this microphone. Hold on. All right. And we go just to make sure I don't catch nothing from you. All right. Yeah. Let me spray this. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. <laughs> Cover the ears. Dude, that's where it's going to come. <laughs> but, but you don't. But, you, but, the, but the thing is, I, like I said, they, they made me wait till the end because they're like, because even my doctor goes, yeah, um, bad news. There's nothing wrong with you, so they're gonna make you wait till the end. <laughs> you're not getting. She goes, you're not getting. He says, if, if you if you have an opportunity to get the shot, take the shot. But I'm telling you right now, I'm looking at your your blood work and everything. There's nothing wrong with you, so you're not getting it for a while. <laughs> well, that was the thing at first too. I went on the state site, and the state site had like. Uh... Uh, sections for if you're an essential worker, but none of it was what I did. I do mm. stupid retail, and so all the other essential workers were up there, but retail wasn't. So I'm like, oh, cool. So I'm still just bottom of the barrel. I still yeah. don't get to... <laughs> I don't get to get rushed for a shot. Isn't it weird that 
under normal circumstances, being healthy is a good thing. Yeah. But in this case, it's like, I was like, yeah, yeah. You, you have these problems? I'm like, damn it, no, no. <laughs> damn it. Right. You know, obesity, I, I lost I weight. God, you suck. <laughs> Give me some cake. <laughs> You're too healthy. You, you got to wait. <laughs> what are you? I swear, when I went into the hospital, when I went into the place to get the shot in the arm, I was waiting for me to go, the hell are you doing here? You're get right. out. <laughs> you punk. You make me sick. Go get some old people, you bastard. And stop wasting our time. We ain't giving you jack. <laughs> Wait a second now. You said you do retail. Okay, now what mm. What type is it? Uh, I work for one of the major ones, but I do the online stuff. Oh, thank so, God. So, like online orders. Oh, so, thank God. I was getting ready to say that. You know, oh. I'm not good with with the pop, popul- populist populace you know most people so uh i am in the back room a lot of times i am so glad i really am because <laughs> i used to have to work out i worked at a blind store and i had to work the cat had to work the computer <sighs> with the customers <laughs> yes yeah no I, I did that when i was younger and i, I don't know how i did it then I, can't. Uh, I yeah, definitely th- could not deal with customers all day oh this is this is well past 30 years ago yeah, but I, but I still have like nightmares of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, customers always right. Uh, customers customers always customers, right. A couple of them customers almost got some rights and some lefts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A couple of elbow uh-huh. strikes, you know. Because back then I was hitting a heavy the bag crotch. all the time. I, I could hit you with an elbow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah I, no, I, I, I could hit, hit people with head kicks back then too. So uh. <laughs> I still get stopped though because I still have to go into the store sometimes, and mm. I still get stopped. You, you know, usually you just up a person buy something, but sometimes it's like they want you to find their entire shopping list. It's like, do you want me to pay for it too and, and go home and, and help you use the stuff? Like, what? What is this? Like, I can't. I can't uh. stand it. I always love too when you're walking and then you hear, oh. Maybe you can help me. Like, just ask me the question. Don't try to set up this whole scenario where, like, ooh, uh, I don't know. Or sometimes I don't wear one a lot of times because I'm uh, not a model, it's a, uh, you know, employee. But they want you to wear name tags. And nothing nothing annoys me more when they're like, hey, Rob, when they act like you're their buddy that they've known for 20 years. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> don't. Uh, uh, how about when they get really creative with your name? Hey, Robo! <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Robert. <laughs> you, already, you, you already know how bad this is going to get. You're like, oh, <laughs> Robbie, yeah. Oh, God. You know, you know it's like, uh, you know, Stevie. Oh, God. I'm going to stab this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, you know, because because the even, even when you do the phone, I'm assuming do, do they call they call into you, right? Mm, I don't get, I don't do the phone, so oh. I don't deal with that there. Oh, but I, I, I just, feel oh, bad. You said online, there. online. That's right. Oh God, oh God, please. Um, let me just let me just pray for you right now. Please, oh God, <laughs> don't make Rob have to do the phone because I know what will happen. Uh, I used to do the phone 30 something years ago and uh, dealing with customers on the phone is just, you know what it's like? Imagine if someone, imagine if you had your text to speech turn on and the trolls on the internet, <laughs> you, could hear, you could hear the trolls talking. Them. That's what yeah. they like. It's like, let me tell you something. And now, because even back then, the politics wasn't as overtly bad as it is now. Oh, because back then it. it was like, oh my God, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Stephen. Your company does work with them homosexuals, and uh, I'm like, oh, I, 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 I'm calling for PBS. Uh, we're just asking you if you want to, you know, help out with the with the pledge drive. And I'm yeah. like, and what the hell? Why are you mad at gay people? What does a gay person do done to you? Except exist, you schmuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's got to be great to deal with. He- hearing all their grievances. And, oh, oh yeah. Ah uh, okay. I, I'm I'm having really bad flashbacks. 
I'm going to get back to you. Steer real quick. away. <laughs> steer away from that. <laughs> oh, man. So, so what's what's coming up uh what's coming up uh on future Robin Slim shows you want everybody to know about? Oh, we got tomorrow. Tonight? We got yeah, we got a live one tomorrow. It'll be our second one for this month. So I have uh Steve Coulter, he's an actor. We've had him on plenty of times over the years. We got him coming back tomorrow. He just did a he just did a film uh with somebody big. I don't even know if I'm allowed to mention it. <laughs> um, he'd been he'd been on the hunt, he, which is a really cool movie. Uh, he was on Walking Dead. He's been in a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, oh, the last time we had him on, he was out of work with the, you know the pandemic and all. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he was doing woodwork with his son. And I mentioned that Slim needed a napkin holder. And the next week in the mail, he he made Slim a napkin holder and mailed it out here. <laughs> so he's a cool dude. And uh, I'm trying to think. I got. I got a bunch of good interviews lined up. Just the same old, you know, hack stuff at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put that chair down. Put the chair down. Put the chair down. <laughs> I do. We do a news segment um, called Drizzle News where we, I, I find some of the worst crime stories. And I play this, like, uh, fast-paced music. And I talk like a, a sports announcer. You know, it's real, real hot. And Slim does this character called the Drizz, mm-hmm. which is like this dumb internet character persona of his so he makes all these dumb comments during it so that's that's probably one of the one of the weird things we do at the beginning that <laughs> that could definitely <laughs> piss somebody off but it's fun we have a lot of fun doing it um how, how that, bad we got, was, go ahead, i'm sorry go ahead no no i'm sorry we got uh slim does I, I love it too that's something i figured out over the years slim is terrible at reading and, and pronouncing names so he does celebrity news and gossip, and he has no idea. He's not into pop culture. He's not into any of these people. He doesn't even know who they have them are. So it's funny trying to hear him read about the Kardashians in, in, that he can't even pronounce their name. So <laughs> that's cool. I, I do. I love that segment, too. It's really weird because I have, I'm at the point now where I literally I watch almost no television. If it's not dudes in uniforms running into each other for a football <laughs> Uh, <laughs> or, or dudes uh, with gloves on punching each other's in the face or law and order <laughs> that's you know <laughs> it was law and order and and violent dudes in uniforms with helmets smacking into each other or dude crescent kicking uh dudes are uh, doing spin kicks in each other's face so <laughs> that's pretty much you know, i'm on the internet the whole time and yeah i don't mind the fact i mean i'm 52 Okay, so when the award shows come on, I don't know these people. Oh yeah, no, I don't even try them to watch those. I, I <sighs> you know, I can't watch them. I just can't do it. And I know I sound like you know, my nephew. You know, he's pushing thirty, and I remember when he was a little boy, and I was explaining to him what record stores were. <laughs> And he goes, let me, let, he says, oh, let me get this straight. You went from your house to a store, and that's how you got music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he goes, I just, I just go on the computer, and I just, I said, yeah, but see, I'm paying for my music. You're stealing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the difference. I pay for it, and you steal. Yep. <laughs> that's the I difference. I still order. I still order <laughs> CDs. Like buy CDs. I still want the physical copy. I don't know. There's just something about it. Yes, there's something about it called you're a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I haven't that's bought it, a book or a. <laughs> physical cd in a long time <laughs> you know i, I I'm, I'm i'm sitting here right now talking to you i'm looking i have a stack of books that i already read and then i turn my head slightly to the left and the kindle the kindle has 10 times more uh, books in it <laughs> the kindle in this, is, in this six foot stack I, of books here i never ventured into the kindle world i don't know like i i used to work in printing so for some reason the kindle was like no that's evil that's putting printers out of business. But it yeah, is well, it's an amazing product. I got news for you. Uh, I never really liked printers that much. I can't stand them. <laughs> I have three Kindles here just oh. to rub it in. 
That's there's how much I don't uh, like printers. <laughs> yeah, no, there's some. I worked with a lot of animals. Mm. They're savages. They are. Like, yeah, I've heard a lot of horror stories about kitchens. Yeah, the people that work in printing facilities are just savages, man. Well, let's be honest. Everything's going away. I mean, you know, it's like, a, yeah. no, you know, you, the CDs. I, I remember somebody tried. I'm a huge Prince fan, right? He has yeah. his new album coming out. And and the first thing they they sent me uh, the the email going here's the new one from Prince I'm like all oh, right I'm gonna get that man that's my boy the CD now nah. <laughs> I went right to Amazon and pre ordered download okay there we yeah. go yeah <laughs> sometimes you can't even buy like sometimes the the regular CD is not even an option so well go to Walmart and look at look mm. at how big the CD section is I think there's like one CD there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. you know, it's nothing anymore. No DVDs, you know. Mm-mm. And you know, a friend of mine was on the phone. He goes, "Hey man, do me a favor, man. When you go around, uh, I'm gonna look out for this this uh, DVD of the Rat mm-hmm. Pack." And uh, I'm like, first of all, um, you're a thousand. <laughs> 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 you're a thousand uh, years old. Second, is it? And I, and, I, and, and keep in mind, this is somebody I've known. This is a good friend for 30 years, so I, it was acceptable for me to say to mm. him what I'm about to say next. And this is going to make me have to put the explicit filter on this particular episode. Okay? Yes. So this is me, not you. And, you know, I'm, I'm literally going to have to mark this episode as explicit. <laughs> because awesome. I, would, I said to this guy, <clears throat> and, and it goes as follows. Get your dumb ass over there and buy some downloads. What the fuck is wrong with you? What are you, a thousand? You stupid bastard. Just go buy the damn downloads, okay? You crunchy prostate bastard. And, uh, <laughs> and he started laughing his ass off. He goes, you can buy downloads unless, yes, you can, you crunchy prostate bastard. You can buy downloads. You and can buy goes, downloads. And then he went and bought the download, and the download was cheaper than the damn CV. I go, look, dude, if you buy it on Amazon, you crunchy down, you crunchy prostate bastard. If you buy it on Amazon, you can download it to your device or whatever. You can erase it from your device, then go back and download it again. You bought permanent access to it. The way he treats CDs and DVDs, I'm like, what are you wiping your ass with these things? <laughs> yes, I always have one friend. Always, always had one friend that, yeah, the CD was the false scratch. What are you oh. doing with this thing, man? Like, goes, it's just, I'm like, dude, it comes in contact with the device and the laser. <laughs> Lasers can't scratch DVDs or CDs. What is wrong with you? Can I borrow your print CD? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> they always want to borrow that CD, too. They always want to borrow that one friend. I made the, like, I no, made the mistake of letting thumb. somebody borrow my uh, Dave Chappelle DVDs. Yeah. I didn't even want them back. I was like, no, nah, that's all right. <laughs> Consider them a gift, man. I don't even want to touch yeah. the damn things, man. Come on. <laughs> yep, I did that once in high school with that one friend of mine, Brian. And yeah, I'm like, dude, you can keep this. You can keep this on top of pilot. I don't, He's I like, don't yeah, need it back in my life. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just download them on the online. Uh, yeah. So, my friend, uh, hopefully, after uh, talking to you, Rob, I'll also be able to get and on and Slim. Um, ah. I don't know if Slim will come on, but I think and might come on. I'm not sure. Yeah. You can definitely get an. <laughs> Slim's still like like you said about it, how you asked it was weird for me. Where I'm cool with doing interviews, but Slim still gets nervous. So oh, yeah, yeah that's, I know that. He seemed that's part he seemed, of it. He seemed kind of. I remember the first time I, I, I was I was on your show and I was watching you guys while I was talking to you guys at the same time, and I'm watching him and he seemed uncomfortable. Mm. You know, and I realized because I was a new dude. The second time He's I came on, in his own skin. We say sometimes, like I always felt like at the beginning too, when we first did the show, he was just an uncomfortable person, and I know I like doing it over the years has brought it, made him more comfortable and more confident. So that's kind of cool. He's like a make a wish kid. <laughs> well, what were you saying about the second time though, as Anthony? The second time I came on, I was like, "Is this the same person?" 
Does he have a twin brother who's more outgoing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. He's gotten more. He's gotten a lot better over the years. Where like I used to cringe in the first few years if he even opened his mouth <laughs> during an interview. Uh, where now it's like, oh no, it's it's cool. <laughs> so it's, it's just it's just the two of you now. You know who's not yeah. there anymore. Yeah, that guy. He's not. He uh, he's not part of it anymore. He uh, we had him up until uh, I think last season. Uh, yeah, the twenty twenty, and uh, once the pandemic hit. Uh, he is an excuse that would work only if you're like a 14 year old boy. He's like, my parents said, I'm not allowed to do the show till the pandemic's over. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, you live on your own. <laughs> They're not, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't even live with your parents. So th- this is BS. So, um, yeah, no, I, I kind of figured for like years though, he didn't want to do the show anymore. And that was mm-hmm. just his way of, of stepping away. So did you, did you feel, I mean, when you, had, cause you have the, this, the two of you, obviously it was the Robin Slim show anyway. But yeah. did you did you feel? I mean, because to me, I, I I do my other podcast is all me. This podcast is nine is ninety nine percent of the time is me and one guest for like an hour. Okay, mm. so, uh, but I've never had like even when I had two guests on, it took me a little while to, you know, get the rhythm down with the third person. Yeah. Um, did you have a problem with that with with three people on the show? I mean, because you had the show established already before he got there, right? Yeah, sometimes too, like throughout the interviews too, he was just wouldn't say a word. So like, I kind of felt like I, yeah, I kind of saw his point of it, where like maybe he felt like a third wheel. And at the beginning of the show, though, I would just make sure make sure that you know we included him in you know the segments and the conversations and all. But I I just don't know. I mean, there were like um, oh my god, there I forget what season it was. You could go and you could watch all of our YouTube videos, and he's just like staring at me and Slim like he wants to murder us. <laughs> like, <laughs> there was one time too where, like, I don't know how many shows in a row it was, but at the end of every show, he would just start screaming. He'd be so drunk, he'd just start screaming at Slim that he was going to beat him up. He, they actually did. They they did backyard boxing to you know to, to oh, get it out of their system. Like <laughs> those two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I gotta two. send you the videos if you've never seen them. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. I, I need to see this because, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling it looked like that uh, Jake Paul Ben Askren fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's fun. It's funny. Oh man. I think Slambo was losing his pants uh, for most. I think most of the fights, Slambo's pants shorts were coming down. It was it was rough. You you. I, I almost wish I did a, a video podcast. I was when you said that those two started fighting. I I literally I was trying to suppress the laugh, um, <laughs> but I failed. I'm going. Come on now. <laughs> it's like, it's like, come on, man. You know, it, you know, it's, it's, you know there's certain certain times you're going. It's like I, I know guys. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood that see this, my section of the neighborhood was next to the really tough neighborhood, which basically <laughs> you might as well just live in the tough neighborhood. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they're yeah. right there. You know. Yeah. And so I know that I don't like to fight people, um, and I only had to whip a few people's asses. But the problem, but the good thing about it was, I whooped just the exact right amount of asses, and just the right amount of ass where people go, I don't think he could beat me, but it's not worth it. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to mess with this guy. It's like, it's yeah, like, that's, I, that's, I, it's that's like I know I can beat him, but he, he's going to mess my face up. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm going to have a broken something. I'm going to beat his ass, but I'm going to be in a hospital with him. It's yeah. not worth it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, that's what I I taught my nephews that I'm like you don't have to win the fight you just have to hurt the other guy just enough, enough. you can still get the victory but he knows it's not worth it and <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> you know and and so when I when you said those two guys are fighting it's like usually when you see two like two just regular you know regular decent dudes like regular guys you know they shouldn't be hitting each other because you're not the guy. They should be hitting each other. It's like it's like you should be the guy that the guys that hit each other protect you from the guys that hit each other. (laughs) It's like Rob, you're the the guy that walks in and goes, "Hey, hey, 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 hey!" It's my friend over there. 
<laughs> back off. And then they leave. Yeah, cut the you shit out. You know, you don't, you don't go, I guess these two guys are going to whip each other's ass. I'm going to sit here and drink and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I will. On the show, I'll let it go down. Yeah, I'll so let you know everybody. What? He said, he's like, he's like, hey, this ought to be funny. I'm not going to let it hurt each other, but I want just enough footage uh, make for the promo. All right, his pants are falling off. Yeah. I'm going to bleep, I'm gonna bleep his butt cheeks out. I'm the wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my brother. I, I've had so a good. great time talking, man. I could do, I could probably do a five-hour show with you, man. Mainly yeah, because man. you do four-hour shows, so it'll be real easy. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do it live, dude, too, because I think uh, we had planned on it, but then the stupid pandemic hit. So we'll definitely mm-hmm. have to get together sometime. That was <clears> the thing, because <throat> we talked before, and I was I was going to come to where you were yeah. and, and record live, and then all of a sudden, you know... But now that I know that there's fist fights breaking out, I don't know, man. I'm trying to keep mellow, man. I don't want to get my ass beat in the middle of a show. (laughs) Well, that guy's gone, so. (laughs) Unless you want to be split up in the yard, I'll leave that up to you. I thought about that once, having a live guest. Maybe after, maybe after, I've been on like two or three times. Maybe if I, once I get into double digits, I'll probably try to rough one of y'all up. (laughs) I'll feel more like part of the family. (laughs) <laughs> My brother, thank you for coming on, man. I knew it was going to be fun talking to you, mainly because we had talked before on many occasions, and it was fun then. And it was great having yeah. you on my show this time, my friend. Thank you, and thank yeah, thanks for having me on, dude. That was a blast. Now, do me a favor, um, uh, plug your show and your websites and every and everything you need people to know before we get, before I let you out of here. Absolutely. I usually tell people just to Google Robin Slim or Robin Slim Show, but on Twitter, we're at Robin Slim Show, and on Facebook, we are just Robin Slim. And you can find us on there. We're on iTunes, uh, Spotify, everywhere else. If you search, uh, you'll find us. And these, these, this show has the SAT seal of approval, so go check it out. Okay, everybody? Rob, thank you, my brother. Thank you, man. That was a blast. All right. We'll talk later, my friend. Talk soon, my dude. Hey, take care. Later.